welcome back, All Star Sports Director. And the only sports director. But still an All Star, All Star Sports Director. Clayton Beery here to talk with us, fittingly enough, about All Star games. It was All Star Sunday this weekend, and this Sunday marked the 56th NBA All Star game and the first NBA All Star game to be played in a city without an NBA team. Now, the city, Las Vegas. The stakes, well, nothing. For the players, of course. Fans, on the other hand, could bet on anything from the o outcome of the opening tip to the total duration of Sunday's rendition of the National Anthem. But before Sunday's game could be played, Saturday's skills competition took place in the same building, featuring a three-point competition, a slam dunk contest, and an all-around skills challenge. And I bet... Uh -huh. you, can, <laughs> you, you like that one? I bet you can't guess who stole the show on Saturday. Here's your man of the hour, Jason Capono of the Miami Heat, getting ready to shoot some three ball of his own. We're going to pick it up here in the final round of competition, midway through, final 11 shots, and this kid goes on a run. Let me tell you, he was hot making it rain. Umbrella sold separately. Straight and fuego. Five in a row, as you can see. Count it down on the bottom of the screen, and when you're on fire, you are hot. And he's hot because he's flying. Well, he's got a great shot. This is why, this is why, this is why he's hot. Sorry, I had to do a basketball rap that go hand in hand. Had to bring it up. Final shot to tie the all-time record of All-Star Weekend with 24 score. Ties Mark Price all-time. Lonzo Morning loving it. Shaq digging it. Nowitzki's like, yo, props, kid, but <laughs> I got to follow that. Ooh. D. Wade loving it as well. Now Nowitzki's turn. As you can see, shed some hair. And uh, he's making a couple shots, but he's shedding some skill, too, on the three-point line. Normally a good shooter, but tonight he's not going to get it done. Gilbert Arenas gets a try at it. Gilbert Arena is a great scorer, but apparently he's been working a little too hard on his defensive skills because he doesn't get it done either. He's going to take a few more shots here, but it's not going to be enough to win it. Your eventual winner, Jason Capone of the three-point competition this All-Star weekend with a final score of 24. Now, Nate Robinson in the slam dunk competition. He measures 5'8", but kid has got some ups. Look at that. Does a little flying squirrel imitation. David Lee loving it. He's a former McDonald's All-American slam dunk winner. He's a St. Louis native as well. Now, look at the replay. Nearly a 45-degree angle before he slams it home. Now, trust me, that's tough. I've tried it in my best. It's about 55 degrees. Now, here's Dwight Howard. He's going to be your eventual winner, and let me tell you, he sticks it, and I do mean sticks it. Look at that. Backboard. There's a sticker. Sticker of himself smiling. I don't, I don't blame him. He should be happy. Top of the backboard is 15 feet. He measures 12'6". That's impressive. And he's going to be your All-Star Weekend Slam Dunk Competition winner. Some of the Western Conference All-Stars played to a 21-point victory over the Eastern All-Stars, winning by a final score of 153 to 132. Defense is optional. <laughs> That's right, and in that game it was. Now, if basketball isn't your betting forte, you may have tried your luck in one of the Sunday's NHL contests, namely the St. Louis Blues versus the Minnesota Wild. The Blues came into the contest riding a two-game winning streak, including a big victory over the NHL's best Nashville Predators. Now, Sunday provided another big game for the Blues against the Wild if they hope to make a playoff run because the Wild currently hold the last spot in the Western Conference, a spot from which St. Louis is currently 12 points behind. A win would put the Blues in reaching distance, distance so could they reach the challenge? There's St. Louis Blues head coach Jack Lamar hoping that his team can live up to the challenge. That's what I was hoping to say. A little hard to spit it out, but I got it. Here we are, first period, 12 minutes in. Blues on the power play. Christian Backman's going to dump it in. Peter Chianik's going to receive it. Pass to David Bax. Bax with a shot. His own rebound. Twists it in for his fifth of the season. Give the Blues a 2-0 lead. Healthy lead in the first period. But he's not going to be finished today. We're going to hear back. More from backs. <laughs> anyway, here come the Wild in the first period trying to cut the lead in half. Now they're going to take a little longer than the Blues, but Todd White's going to get in the corner, pass it in front to Adam Hall. Adam Hall with a nice little backhander in midair to tip it past Blues goalie Manny Legacy. Now watch this replay. Todd White gets the pass. First attempt from Adam Hall doesn't go in, in the air, just backhanded. It makes it look easy. 2-2 game after the first period. Here we are in the second period. Blues going again. Wild trying to break it out. Gets held up by, of all people, the referee. Now we'll take that break. Lee Stepniak in the corner. Passes across to Jay McClement. And I don't know how it went in, but trust me, it did. Oh, hey, we're going to show you. Here's the replay. Stepniak in front. The redirection squeaks past goalie Backstrom. Here we are one more time. Watch this. That is about as close as it gets. There's no more room for that puck to go in, but we'll take it. 3-2 lead. The Blues aren't finished now. Here we are one more time. I said Bax is going to have a good game, so here he comes. Puck gets stopped. 
Redirect it back in. The rebound. Ooh, that is pretty. David backs a six of the season. That'll give the Blues a 4-2 lead. Now here's the replay. Rebound, upper deck, almost knocks the water bottle off Blues win. Now that win put the Blues 10 points out of a playoff spot and extends their winning streak to a grand total of three. So Brent, hopefully we can count on the Blues winning as they host Columbus tonight at the Scott Trade Center. I just hope we can count on counting you back next week. Oh, I'll be here. <laughs> Better be. Good man. All right, thanks Clayton. A group of SLU students have their own way of celebrating V-Day. And although the festivities weren't allowed on campus this year, it didn't stop a few brave students from standing up and speaking out. As if you couldn't guess by the name, a cloud of contro controversy constantly surrounds the vagina monologues. Una, SLU's feminist group, found a new home at the YWCA after SLU would not allow them to perform on campus this year. Nonetheless, they continued to have success. SLU News reporter Candice Naranjo has the report. I'm here today at the YWCA to attend the annual performance of the Vagina Monologues. We're all here in the support to end the violence against women. Last Friday and Saturday, UNA, SLU's feminist organization, hosted their annual presentation of the Vagina Monologues. The Vagina Monologues was performed at the YWCA after denied permission to perform on campus. I was going to go on stage and I wouldn't be part of that, and especially because SLU wouldn't allow it this year. I wanted it so that I wouldn't be a part of that. I wanted to show that this needs to be seen, this message needs to be heard. I spoke with Rachel Buckler about V-Day 2007 and the context of this year's theme. We want to know, what does the V in V-Day stand for? Uh, the V stands for originally Valentine's Day, but it also stands for violence, it stands for vagina, it stands for victory. Um, and it represents different things for different people, so that's why the V-Day campaign chooses to express it that way. Can you tell us a little bit about what the V-Day campaign for this year stands for, what it's trying to represent, and what it's trying, the message it's trying to give? Sure. Um, for 2007, the campaign chose a theme called Reclaiming Peace. Um, it's a focus on women in conflict zones, women in the midst of war, um, women experiencing the aftermath of war. Um, the focus is on anti-violence groups worldwide, so that's why we chose uh, to benefit the Karen House and Women's Safe House. Thank you very much. V-Day is a movement present in 81 countries that helps women who struggle with rape, battery, incest, female mutilation, and sex slavery. Their mission is to stand up, to stand up for an end to violence. Let's all stand, stand up. up. For Salute News 22, I'm Candace Naranjo. Well, they raised over $7,000 for charity this year with their efforts, so yeah, very nice. congratulations. Absolutely. If you miss Mardi Gras or you just can't get enough of French culture, another opportunity does exist for SLU students and the St. Louis University community. SLU News 22 reporter Patrick Wessel tells us more. This Thursday, the 2002 French film Le Papillon, or The Butterfly, floats into Kelly Auditorium at 7 p.m. The fourth of ten indie films in the Campus Film Series 2007, The Butterfly focuses on a young girl. The theme of this year's film series is It's About Children, and director of the Film Studies Program, Dr. Jean-Louis Patro, explains why. In today's world, actually, children are under a lot more stress than probably 50 years ago. So we thought that was a good, a good thing to cover. Those in charge of the film series considered showing film classics, but because of their availability on cable television, instead opted to screen more recent films that SLU students might not be able to see in St. Louis theaters. The Butterfly is such a film. The Butterfly is a really nice French film. It's, um, there, there isn't that many actors in it. It's a, it's a small budget film, but it's, it's really a film that actually examines the topic of children. You know, what do we do with children in our world? It's the story of a little girl. Um, she doesn't have a father. Um, the father just abandoned, uh, abandoned her. And the mother's too busy working uh, to really take care of her. And she finds this sort of substitute grandfather, uh, which is a, uh, who's a man uh, collecting butterflies. And so it's the story of their friendship. Now it's up to you to catch the butterfly this Thursday at 7 p.m for a trailer of Le Papillon, and to find out what other films will be playing on SLU's campus, check out the SLU News 22 section of slutv.slu.edu and click on News Off the Air. Reporting for SLU News 22, I'm Patrick Wessel. For those of you who prefer your entertainment a little more domestically, Kathy Kelly is here.
for some entertainment news. Kathy, please tell me that you've got some uh, juicy gossip and maybe some juicy pictures of a uh, Britney Spears new hairdo, oh, or no. is it <laughs> lack thereof? <laughs> yeah, the, say? the shaved hair. I don't know about that. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have any pictures of that, but I have something better for you. William Shakespeare fans across campus can rejoice because the University Theatre will be showing a Midsummer Night's Dream for the next two weekends. Candace Naranjo has more. Behind these doors in the Xavier Hall Theatre, the Sleuth Theatre Group will enchant us with William Shakespeare's A Midsummer Night's Dream, directed by Gary Barker. The actors are excited and anticipating opening night on Friday, February 23rd at 8 o'clock p.m. The play represents Shakespeare's traditional work, depicting a romantic comedy based on the adventures of four young lovers, a group of amateur actors, and fairies that inhabit the forest. However, this year's play comes with a special surprise theme, so don't miss out on this weekend's must-see Slew Theater's performance, A Midsummer Night's Dream. For SLU News 22, I'm Candace Naranjo. You can check that out this Friday and Saturday at 8 p.m. or the matinee at Sunday at 2 p.m. Now for this week's movie releases. It takes 23 seconds for blood to circulate throughout the entire body. Each parent contributes 23 chromosomes to the DNA of a child. Julius Caesar was stabbed 23 times when he was assassinated. The number 23, a new movie, opens this Friday, February 23rd, and it centers around Walter Sparrow, played by Jim Carrey. Walter reads a dark and chilling murder mystery that scarily mirrors his own life. The number 23 is referred to multiple times throughout the movie, and in order for Walter to save his own life and the lives of others, he must unlock the mystery behind the number. Other movies to release this Friday are The Astronaut Farmer, The Abandoned, and Reno 911 Miami. Although some of these movies may keep you on the edge of your seat, I don't think they'll be snagging any awards anytime soon. But speaking of awards, it's Oscar season, so if, you have, if you're brave enough to pick up the remote control and somehow tear your eyes away from SLU 22 for just a few hours, I'd suggest flipping over to ABC for the Oscars this Sunday. Competition is tough, and here are the nominees fighting for that little golden statue. And the nominees for Best Actor include Leonardo DiCaprio in Blood Diamond, Ryan Gosling in Half Nelson, Peter O'Toole, Venus, Will Smith, The Pursuit of Happiness, and Forrest Whitaker, The Last King of Scotland. The nominees for Best Actress are Penelope Cruz, Volver, Judi Dench, Notes on a Scandal, Helen Mirren, The Queen, Meryl Streep, The Devil Wears Prada, and Kate Winslet in Little Children. Movies in the running for Best Picture include Babel, The Departed, Letters from Iwo Jima, Little Miss Sunshine, and The Queen. The Oscars will premiere this Sunday at 5 p.m. on ABC. So now that football's over, I'm sure everyone will be tuning into that. Yeah, <laughs> of uh, course. Definitely. <laughs> uh, actually, that's about all we have for you tonight, but um, if you do want to see those pictures of Britney Spears' shaved head, you can check out PerezHilton.com. It's a good website. We need to get those on our website, maybe, maybe next week. But thanks for tuning in this week. I'm Brent Carney. And I'm Courtney Brown. Good night, Slew.